Hi, the purpose of this video is to show you how to use the mapping function in Zeiss Zen software. The idea is that this is a functionality that you can use to make a, a map of a large region in your sample and then uh, use that map to identify regions of interest within that sample that you actually want to image at higher resolution uh, or with more detail. So why might you want to do this? Well, for example, you might want to look for cells that are transfected, uh, that have the, for cells that have a certain morphology, uh, or you may want to use it as a way of doing some form of random sampling. So the example I have here is with the 40x oil objective on a sample that has uh, three channels, uh, three fluorophores of staining. Uh, we have actin in green, uh, mitochondria in red, and nuclei in blue. And I've also set everything up so that we have a transmitted light um, channel, which you can see here, uh, barely, uh, which shows you the morphology of the cell. So we could probably tweak this. There we go, and get a little bit better uh, what the morphology of the cell looks like. Um, all right, so uh, how do I do the mapping? The way I do the mapping is I click on Tile Scan, and making sure that this is in focus, so let's actually check that before we do anything else. I'm going to go live. That looks perfectly in focus. So uh, once we're in focus, we go to Tile Scan, and in tile scan at the bottom there's going to be a button that says scan overview image. We press that button. We select how many tiles we want horizontally, horizontally and vertically. And this here tells us what the size of the final image will be. We make sure the zoom is set to 0 0.6. And then we make sure that we're on the same objective uh, for the scan overview image as what we're using to image currently. We don't want to switch the objective when we do this because if we switch from oil to non-oil, we'll probably call it, cause a mess on the microscope. Uh, and even switching between two oil objectives or two air objectives, frequently there's enough of a difference in focus uh, that this doesn't work very well. So you always want to use the same objective, which in this case is the 40x 1.4 oil. And that is not what's going to be selected by default. By default, I think, uh, um, this always starts with the, uh, the 10x air objective. It's just I, I did a trial run before this video and that's why it was already on 40x 1.4 oil. So then you hit scan and it will acquire uh, an image that is 5 by 5 and all melded together. Let me turn off the transmitted light PMT so we can see everything else. Uh, as you can see there's actually uh, not that much going on here. There aren't that many cells. I'm going to bump up the contrast so we can see a little bit better. Um, as you can see there are some cells here, some that are brighter here, some that aren't here. Uh, here's another bright one. You'll notice that in this case the bright cells seem to be kind of in a, they seem to be in a strip here. The reason for that is that this this particular sample is uneven in the Z. It's not because of how the sample is placed on the stage. I just checked that. It's, it's not tilted. But when this sample was mounted on a slide, so it has a it's, a, it's a cover slip on a slide, it has a slight tilt. And so this strip is in focus, but these are not. OK, so that's why it looks a little bit weird. But even though we have this focus problem, it gives us a sense of all the cells that are here. So this is a map. So how do we use this to either do some form of random sampling or to pick cells that we're interested in? So let's say we look at this and we're interested in cells that have a lot of projection, so things like this. So how do we tell the microscope to go there? The way we can do that is by clicking on stage. This tells us where we are uh, currently and if we click on any other position, we don't need to drag this, we can just click on our target, the stage will automatically go there. So for example, if I click here, and then snap an image there, you can see that we've now taken an image in that location. Um, so that's very, very useful. Now, a, a way of making this perhaps even more useful is to, uh, have this map side by side with the images we want to acquire. So let's say um, 
we want to do that. We want to have the map on one side and then the images we're acquiring on the other. How do we do that? So we right click up here, set this to two container, and now we have the ability to have two images. So I'll put the map on this side and I'll put the other image here. Um, so now if I click on image 7, which is the last image, uh, it, which is the image I just took, whatever I click on last will be the container that will be updated. So if I now click on live, this image, this container is, is updated, but if I click here, the stage moves and I see an image of wherever I'm pointing. And you can see things like if I click here, there is something there, it's just out of focus. So if I go to focus, let's see if we can get that in focus. I'm going in the wrong direction here. There we go. So you can see how you can navigate this dynamically. Now, if we forget to click on the container that doesn't, ha that doesn't have the map, and then move this and click live, the image will be updated in this container. So we can still have the map side by side, we just need to uh, move this over. So remember, the last thing you click on, so whatever's uh, highlighted in white, is what's going to be updated when you hit live. Okay, And when you click on this, note that uh, this gets uh, highlighted. So you, know, you can click around, but then just remember to click here if you want the new image in this container. Right. And so, for example, that one's also out of focus. Let's see if we can get it in focus. There we go. Uh, it looks a little bit blown out. That's just because I've uh, I've made the display uh, really bright so we could see things. But just trust me that uh, this is not saturated. It's just a display issue. Okay. So this is this is great. This is a way of, of looking around. What things do we need to be uh, careful with? Um, so one of the things I, I already mentioned, which is when you do this scan overview image you want to make sure that you use the proper objective. Uh, another thing is that um, when, when you do this, you have to be careful with the settings. So when you do the scan overview image, um, when, when, you're, when you finish, it reverts all the settings to whatever you had. So um, in channels and uh, in acquisition mode, everything go back, goes back to where it was except sometimes it doesn't um, it it sort of doesn't go back properly in things like averaging or frame size so if you have very specific settings that you want um, you should make sure to take an image with those settings for example let's say I, I want to zoom in by a factor of two sorry there we go let's say I want to zoom in by a factor of two uh, let's say I want to do max speed and for averaging, I'm going to snap an image of this cell with those higher settings, higher resolution settings. Let's say I want that. And I'm going to save this image as, um, call it high res. Okay. So then if I take a map, uh, let's say we hadn't done this, we want to take another map. I'm going to take a smaller one. It'll take a mapped image. You can see it moving around here. And when it stops taking this mapped image, the settings will try to revert back to what we had for high res, but they might not be exactly the same. Okay, so. Uh, I've seen this uh, where they don't revert back. So here it seems like everything reverted back to what it should be. But I've seen cases where it doesn't. So just in case, if you see that happening, that the settings don't bounce back to what they were, you can go to high res uh, or to whatever image you had and then say reuse to make absolutely sure that now the settings that you're going to use when you take uh, an image are those from, from this. So I think I, I made a mistake here. Let's see. Yeah, I had clicked on the, on not the right one. OK, there we go. So um, again, we make the map. You can even save this. And then you can click around. And whatever uh, 
whatever the last place was that you clicked and had this, this, this white highlight is what's going to get updated. So you can sort of dynamically explore the sample. And if things are out of focus, if you were on the microscope, you could focus with the focus knob. I'm just doing this so I can show you, and also I'm accessing it remotely to make this recording. All right. Um, so what about if you want to do random sampling? So if you want to do random sampling, you can use something like this by, for example, generating three random numbers between one and four. And so the first random number can be whether you look at something in this quadrant, this quadrant, or this quadrant, or this quadrant. So one, two, three, four. Then you can subsplit that quadrant into four other ones, and you can do a second random number that's one, two, three, or four, and that'll tell you which of these subquadrants you look at. And then you can have a third one, which is in, in those subquadrants, which smaller part of it uh, will you use to find a cell. So there's no way to automate that uh, very easily, but um, at least it gives you uh, a way of, of truly looking uh, at sort of a random uh, part of this uh, mapped area of the sample. So you might want to consider that uh, as you're trying to figure out ways of finding representative images. Um, I hope you found that useful, uh, and as usual, please let me know if you have any questions.